Good morning, everybody. All right, I'm going to go over what happens if you have corrupt video files in your library. All right, first off, let me explain some of the background that's going on here. Um, when you are editing, Final Cut Pro likes to go, likes to convert the media to a different format. You can leave it as native, but it likes to try to convert it to a different format because it finds that it has better results with it. It's more suited to Apple ProRes 422 than it is to codecs like H.264 or AVC Intro or MPEG-2 or even MPEG-4. And there are several reasons for this. Um, so let me explain what's going on with a codec. All right, so if you were to look at a codec like MPEG-2, that would be a good acquisition codec. Well, some people use it as an acquisition codec. I don't particularly like it. Um, but a lot of people use it as a finishing codec. That's your typical codec for DVD video. And MPEG-2, and also Blu-rays use it too, I believe. Yeah, I think they use a high-definition version of MPEG-2, and that should be fine. Um, what MPEG-2 does is it has what are called I-frames, P-frames, and B-frames. And what it does is the I-frame is your intra-frame, or your fully full resolution, highest quality frame that you have. And every, in, in MPEG-2 on NTSC, every 15 frames, you'll have one I-frame. And then the P-frames and the B-frames are frames that interpolate what is between the I-frames. So I believe MPEG-2 will do I, P, B, B, P, B, B, P until it gets to another I. And the way that works is the P-frames, you'll have your two I-frames, and your P-frames will kind of figure out what needs to change between them, between the I-frames, and then the B-frames will go even further and, and throw out more information and only go from one P-frame to the next and try to figure out what changes between those frames. So basically, in MPEG-2, when it's encoding, it looks for any changes between the frames and throws out the information that does not change. So if you have a guy standing there and he doesn't move for 10 frames, then MPEG-2 only needs to encode him for one frame and just tell the rest of the codec that it doesn't need to change or tell the rest of the movie file that it doesn't need to change him at all for 10 frames. So that's, that's how MPEG-2 works. And most of the other codecs kind of work in the same way. H.264 kind of works the same way. Um, AVC Intra is the codec that I choose to shoot with. And in that case, it's highly compressed, but it does not have the B frames and the P frames. It's just I frames only. So every single frame is the start of um, of the whole group of pictures. It can be, it doesn't have to figure out what kind of interpolation it needs between frames. Every frame can be a start frame. Whereas if you were trying to edit with MPEG-2, because it's only every 15 frames, it would have to recreate new start frames every time you edited 12 frames in. You know, you make an edit four frames in, you stop it and cut it there, that first frame has to be an iframe. So it has to recreate the whole group of pictures to make sure that it can do that. And that will take up a lot of rendering time. So your editing codecs, you want to have iframes all the time. That way you don't have to worry about decompressing and recompressing and doing all this crazy stuff. Now, AVC Intra is a processor heavy codec. It does encode at 100 megabits per second, which is pretty good. And if you were to have it on your hard drives, you would only need maybe 200 megabits per second transfer rate for a high definition AVC intra in order to be able to scrub through it smoothly and, and do all that. But because it's processor heavy, you'll need a lot of processing power to do it too. And you'll notice that if you are editing with AVC intra, it will take a little bit to start because it has to process the few frames before it, before you start playing the video. ProRes 422, on the other hand, will hammer your hard drives like crazy, but it won't use as much 
uh, processing power, and that is because it's less compressed. And for me, it's a very good um, it's a very good medium between editing and between saving space and saving processor. So I find it to be very fast. Final Cut Pro plays with it really well. And therefore, I let Final Cut Pro transcode all of my media to ProRes 422. Okay, now I'm going to mention something called Proxy. And Proxy is very low resolution files. And they've been using Proxy files ever since I started in editing. And the way it works is you get really low resolution files, you do all your effects, and then at the last minute you change it out to the full resolution stuff and export it, and you have your full resolution things. Now I'm going to show you the difference. This is this is an unrendered clip in I'll just kind of start it from right here. Actually, if I scrub through this, you can see it it's kind of slow scrubbing. It takes a few seconds. But I'm going to play this from right about here. And this is the full resolution file. Like the that, optimized I media. You can see it's it's kind of choppy. Remember, the graphics are there too, and the graphics are encoded to the higher quality format. See how choppy it is right here? I'm losing the audio and everything. Okay, let's go back here and switch it to proxy. I should have my proxy media there. All right, and let's play it. Now look how much smoother it is. And the reason it's so much smoother is because instead of doing 145 megabits per second, it only has to do 18. And my processor can process it. It's not really compressed. It's just a lot of the information is thrown out. So it's not very high quality. I would not want to try to broadcast this because it's not very high quality. All right. Now, I can't give you a demo of AVC Intra on this because I just don't have any AVC Intra files that I'm using because all of this is uh, optimized or proxy media. All right, now let me show you the difference. Let's do a size comparison. Well, we'll do that in a minute. Okay, so now let's say... I've got an issue. Every single time I run over this clip right here, it uh, it gives me a problem. Let's say it's this one right here. And every time I run over it, it crashes. Or when I try to render, it crashes. And I, and it's frustrating. So what I can do is I can right click on the clip that's that's the culprit and I can reveal in the browser. And I'll find it right here. Now I know that this that the original is fine. So I'm going to get rid of the proxy media. And how I can do that, and usually it does it through all of it. So I'm going to show you how to do all of them, and then I'm going to show you how to do just the one. And there's little difference between the two. Okay, I'm going to go to my file menu. Actually, I have to kind of click here so there's nothing selected and click right here so it's selected the event. So I go to File, Delete Generated Event Files. And I can delete my render files, my optimized media, and my proxy media. And it's going to delete all of the proxy media and all of the optimized media that is here. And that is that is good. That's It does two things. It helps you save space, and it helps you if if the optimized or the proxy media is corrupt. It also helps you save space with the render files. You can have corrupt render files too. So that's one way to get rid of them. But let's say I know it's this one. So what I can do is I can right click and go reveal in Finder and it'll tell me what the number is. I have a ton of media in here. All right, let me show you something. This is where it's located. And if you notice this little icon right here, if I were to double click on that, Let's say I go to my libraries and I double click on this David Wilson's right here. It will open up that library in Final Cut Pro. But in reality, this is a folder, not a file. So if I right click on it and I hit show package contents, 
I can see the entire folder full of stuff. All right. Now let's go back here and reveal in Finder again. And here I have 0412SJ. And if you notice my path, it's in 6.13.2015. And it's in original media. But I don't want to delete the original media. I want to delete the transcoded media. Let's go with the proxy one first. 0142SJ is sort of by name. 0142SJ. I'm going to delete the proxy media and watch. When I go to proxy, this one will disappear. And it'll disappear here too. Increíble. El carro está impecable. Amigos, lo mejor de todo, el pre Pretty crazy. So how do I get it back? Well, the proxy one's corrupt, so I'm going to get the proxy one back. And how I do this is I right click and I hit transcode media and I say create proxy media. And this should rip through this because it's real short. So it's done. If I go back to my finder, I will see I now have 0142SJ here in the proxy media. Well, let's say my original media is bad. Not my original, my, my high quality media is bad. 0142SJ right here. So it's not going to disappear from my proxy, but if I switch back to original, you'll see it disappear there. Actually, it might not. And the reason it won't from here is because it's now <coughs> it's now playing the AVC intro version of it. Increíble. El carro está impecable. Amigos, lo mejor de todo, el precio. Okay, so now I'm going to transcode it to original. I mean to uh, optimized. So I right click, go to transcode, and I can create optimized media. Shouldn't take very long. Okay, it's done. So now it'll play with the optimized media. Increíble. El carro está impecable. Amigos, lo mejor de todo, el precio. Este vehículo. So there we go. Now, if I wanted to get rid of it in my finder, I just showed you that you would go to your libraries and right click and go show package contents and you'll find it under the event in transcoded media and you can find whether it's high quality or proxy media. What if my original media was bad? Well, that's a whole other problem altogether. But let me show you something. I have a particular client <clears throat> that every time I get something from them, it's no good. I have to do something else. I have to change it or modify it. It's this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, drop it in this event right here. And you're going to see it's going to start rendering and importing. And it's going to copy files. And then once it's done copying files, it's going to transcode. But I'm not going to let it do that. I'm just going to just drop it in here right now. And I'm going to start playing it. And you'll see what happens. And you can already see what's happened. Something has gone wrong. We might even have a, a crash from Final Cut Pro for this one. So this is bad original media. It didn't even get to the point of transcoding it. Yeah, it's done. It crashed. And that's what I wanted it to do. So we're going to find out what to do with that. Now, if I open that back up, it probably should not open up with, um, with that file in there. It might, but it might not. But here's what we do. I use a program called MPEG Stream Clip to flip a lot of things. I don't like, I like Compressor and I like Adobe Media Encoder, but I find a, I don't know, I just really like this MPEG Stream Clip. And how you do it is you put your file into MPEG Stream Clip and you export. You can do file export or just command E. And I have a preset set up, but you can set up your own. And how I do this is Apple ProRes 422. 
100% quality, uncompressed sound, um, auto on the on the uh, sample rate. 29.97 on the frame rate for me for NTSC. Frame blending, better downscaling, all this stuff. It really doesn't matter what I'm doing, but for all this stuff, I usually keep that on there. Upper field first, and then 1920 by 1080 scale, unscaled. Then I hit make movie. And I will give it the exact same name, and I will just put a 422 at the end, and then I'll save it. Now, in this case, it has one there already, so I'm just going to use that once uh, Final Cut Pro opens back up. Okay, so everything's opened back up. Everything's good now. What I'm going to do is grab the 422 version of the file and drop it in here. And you'll see what it'll do is it will import the media very quickly. And while it's doing that, I can just go ahead and throw it down here at the end. And let's start playing the file. And you can see there's no issues. It, it plays just fine. Okay. And while it's doing that, let's look at the transcoding and analysis. Now, it stopped a little bit earlier, but see how quickly it went through and transcoded? It basically is the same file. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of it. But I don't have the same issue that I had before because it is not that weird H.264 that causes it to crash. Okay, so what we went through is if you have a corrupt file, how to pinpoint whether it's a proxy file that's corrupt or a optimized file that is corrupt or an original file that is corrupt and how to get rid of each of those different things. And that's all I have for now. So if you have any questions or anything, please feel free to leave me a message on YouTube, leave me a comment, whatever you want to do. I'll do my best to read through everything and, and answer as many questions as possible. And if you have anything you want me to show you, then let me know and I'll do my best to do that as well. All right. Thank you very much for watching.